you know, because that's that's what I do as I share these things. Sharing is caring. Sharing is care. That's what they that's what they tell me anyway. Um, I was gonna share it. Hold on. How come it's not? Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna write this down. Happening now. Okay, here we go. Did you share? Uh, I shared earlier today. Okay. In that case, uh, welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the gear you hear, everybody. Um, this is the space where we talk about all things music, all things gear, and not just gear from the tech side, but gear from the creative and artistic side and the performance and recording side of things. Um, I am one of your co-hosts, Emiko, and I'm here with Scott, the pedal guy. And before we begin, a couple of house rules. This is a space where you can ask questions and interact and um, be inquisitive. So. There are no stupid questions and there are probably no stupid answers. There's some goofy answers I think that we would give out, right? But no stupid ones. Um, this is really a place for education and for connection. So we don't talk politics, we don't talk religion, we don't sexually harass, we don't really harass in general. Um, there's no bullying and there's no trolling, which means that if you are a troll, um, and you're able to set that aside, you are welcome to join us. But if you're not and you write a trolling comment, we will read it out, read out your name and bounce you the heck out of here because this is a one strike you're out zone and you will never be allowed to come back to the kingdom. It's kind of nuts. <laughs> you so have been warned. you have been warned. And if you're, if you join us regularly, then you know that already. And thank you for, sorry, I have to adjust my, I got a lot going on here, Scott. It's like today's been a day. Um, anyway, so we thought today, what would be a fun thing for us to do? Because we really hit the ground running when we started this a couple months ago. Um, and we've had some tremendous guests on and we thought what would be cool, um, is for us to have a show where we are the guests. We interview each other. We talk about our stories and uh, the you know the gear that we use and and how we incorporate that into the creative process. Because I think one of the things that people tend to miss a lot is when you're watching a podcast like this, you assume that the host is just a host, and you don't really get to know what has inspired them to start. A program like this right so i think that it's that might i don't know at least for me anyway i feel like that's a good way to connect further with people connect with them on a on a deeper on a next level and um you know just kind of just kind of get it out there i'd like to add you are the hostess with the mostess so <laughs> that's it, it all works in my in my book well th thank you and like what well you're not a hostess but you're a host you're the host with the most <laughs> So thanks for that. Um, sure. <laughs> the other, the other, of course, uh, fun of all of this is that we can be a little more. We can let our hair down just a little bit and have have some fun too. So yeah. Why not? And of course, this is one where we're really taking kind of a big step forward because we're actually going to talk about <gasps> gear, and we actually brought gear, and we're actually going to be able to demo some gear. Where, where's yeah, your yeah, There's your gear. Yeah, All right, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you know, as this is, of course, the World Series happening right now, we are in uh, Dodger blue here. Right. Uh, so uh, we we are we are celebrating the boys in blue one way or another. Uh, what a game last night! I can't wait for tonight's game and. Uh, they're in Arlington, Texas, and uh, we'll have a little fun with that, I think. So oh, yeah. it should be a, it should be a good day. But anyway, this should be a, a good session, I think. Um, I think so. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking to you about about that that vortex you got there, because that doesn't look like a regular vortex. That that looks like a that looks like a special vortex. It's a special vortex. His name is Carlos. Carlos, Carlos is bedazzled there. <laughs> Carlos is a, he's a one of a kind uh, custom Alesis Vortex Wireless 2. And he actually is the only one in the world, except uh, he does have a twin sister named Carlotta, who ah. is, uh, she's pink and red. And um, she lives, she lives at my studio in Las Vegas. Carlos lives with me, Carlos sort of travels. He's the older twin, right? Older by like a couple minutes, but he's still the older twin. Um, I got you. So yeah, so Carlos, Carlos is my baby. He's one of my babies, but he's Excellent. he's the one that everybody knows. I think. Uh, with the gear I show 
on my yeah. on my channel. I I don't have time to name them because pretty much <laughs> by the time they have gone their way through the demo machine back there, uh, they're pretty much already sold or they found new homes. So they're like, that's good it's, though. It's like a box full of kittens, you know. It just well, if it, you know, we're. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just waiting. Going, no, 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 they're just waiting there to find a home. Oh, okay, find me okay, a home. Good. Find me a home. Good, good. Yes, no, 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 no. nothing like, obscene. Like Christmas um, tree wood chipper or something. Oh, good lord, no. Okay, good, 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 good. I mean, I'm not yeah. a cat person, but I'm not that bad of a person. <laughs> That's true. We are, we are, we are self-proclaimed, I think, dog people. But, yes, but, we are. Right, your your wife and you and my partner and I are, are dog people. But we do, we love cats. We love all animals. Right. And we do we have a we do have a a, a white albino cat uh, that, that the neighborhood has pretty much adopted that comes out nice. and frightens me in the morning when I'm walking uh, my doggy at six in the morning. So uh, uh, yeah, it's just uh, so everybody is always uh, afraid of black cats because they think that's bad luck. And I'm like, right. no, the white cats are the ones you got to look out for, especially them albino ones. Those are the ones that'll suck your soul out. They're, yeah, um, they are. They are succubuses. Succubi? Yeah. Is that plural? Succubi. succubi. There you go. Succubi? I don't know. We're yeah, also, okay. And we also I should mention uh, before we we dig into this, uh, yeah. this is going to be kind of a uh, a, a, a different. Uh, well, this will be this will be interesting to see how this goes. My wife is a therapist, and she's been home uh, throughout the pandemic. She does a a two week in, two week out sort of schedule. So she is literally on the flip side of this wall. Uh, talking to clients. So, She's sucking up your uh, bandwidth. Nope, nope. We, okay, I, okay. I solved that problem. Oh, good. I solved, oh, I kicked that problem right in the butt. Okay. Uh, but uh, no, this uh, in this case here though, she's uh, she's got her her therapy clients, and so she's giving people mental therapy. We we'll, we're giving people retail therapy and so, music therapy. Yes, and absolutely. music therapy. So we absolutely. we have we have a, a a dual therapy session going on here. So awesome. um, it's I, I think it's going to be pretty cool. So Great. yeah. The, the beauty of tele of uh, telecommuting, you know, you can uh, you can you can do the therapy over the phone via That's Skype right. or however. It's it's pretty right. cool stuff now. It's right. quite inventive. There'll yeah. be books written about all of this stuff after it's all over. Uh, just tons and tons of information about people that you know developing new coping skills and all that fun stuff. But anyway, yeah. I want to get off that subject. But I just thought it'd be kind of interesting because if you hear something in the background. You'll know what it is. Otherwise, okay. other than a dog bark, of course. Well, I was gonna say, if you hear heavy panting coming from my end, Victoria's at my feet. No, my my dog. I have an American <laughs> bulldog who, she, she's a heart murmur, and mm. and uh, she's but she's also hyperactive, so she just she just comes and hangs out next to me, and you'll or if you hear panting or snoring, that's Victoria. Just, all right, all right, or that'll anyway. be or that'll be somebody in our audience that fell asleep. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's kick into it. Where do you want to? Where do you want to start? I don't know. You tell me. Well, uh, you 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 were you went to prep school because you come prepared, uh, and okay. uh, and you you came prepared with some questions. So I did. Yeah, we, we can we can do a couple of those, and obviously, I, I think it would be beneficial to our audience to find out a little bit about both of us, uh, yes, what we absolutely. actually do so that we can actually talk the talk and walk the walk because we're not right. just those, we're not empty shirts as far as like, you know, people that do these shows. We're actually legitimate people that work in the business right. and have we're worked in the business for decades. We're not just pretty faces, ladies and gentlemen. We know Well, you're the pretty face. Thought. That's why I put you on the thumbnail. So, you know, you don't need to see my mug on the thumbnail. There you go. <laughs> all we do is just, as guys, all we do is just dumb poses like, <laughs> and that, that's supposed to get people to click on our videos on YouTube. I, I don't I, understand that at all. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, okay, I, tell, I tell you what. I have. So I have a. I have a question for you. Go right so ahead. So you are the pedal guy, and the way that I met you was actually through um, a pedal manufacturer, a pedal designer, uh, Greg Lounsbury from Lounsbury Pedals, of which I am very proud to be on their artist roster. Um, and when you and I met, it was to do a promo for this, for the, for the organ, for the organ grinder pedal. Um, mm -hmm. And what I thought was so cool about you was that you're not just your regular sort of distributor dealer, right? You're not, you're not your regular sales person. There's a history with you. There's a story behind why, you run things the way that you do and why you're so committed to interactivity and connection with 
I'm not going to call them your customer base. I'm going to call them your followers because they are. You've managed to build this really cool community of people, of not just artists, but of manufacturers, designers, all sorts of people that are in here. Um, so I would love for you to tell everybody the story of how that came to be, because I think it's a really cool one. Wow. Okay. That's, that's quite a, it's quite Told a, you I was prepared. Oh, you were prepared. Check you out. <laughs> um, well, anyway, uh, okay. Well, my, my career goes back um, about 25 years now at this point. So I've been doing this for a while. Um, I, I did a lot of, I, my, my career has been based mostly in technology. Um, so I've worked for a lot of software manufacturers. Um, I've also worked on the dealer side as well. Uh, I was a buyer at a chain store that shall remain nameless. That doesn't really. I've worked at Guitar Center. We can say that. Sure. Um, that's that, there's no big secret there. If people know my mug, they know where I was at that. Uh, and uh, I, I've developed relationships over the years uh, with a lot of these manufacturers because we are kind of just a small town, really. When it gets down to it, the music industry isn't isn't as big as people might think, especially on the manufacturing side. On the manufacturing side, we're 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 rather we're rather compact. So. Uh, a person might leave a job at one company, but they'll pop up in another company, uh, right. undoubtedly. And yeah. that's where we keep the relationship going. So I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of great support throughout the years uh, that's enabled me to do what I do. And even when I was between gigs, um, I was still you know, writing books uh, for, for course technology. I wrote a book about Reason, if you remember that program, uh, which a lot of people still you know, read, <laughs> bought that book over the years, and it's been uh, it's been an interesting ride for sure. But um, yeah, the the pedal guy just kind of came out of an idea of just getting back to my roots because I was always first and foremost a guitar player, and that was where I wanted to really live because I I really love pedals. I, I think pedals are like the ultimate video game. There's never a, a level you can't achieve. You have to just buy a new pedal to get to that level. Um, and in fact, I, I still have my very first pedal back here, but an old Boss uh, Overdrive, um, and I still I still have it to this day. It still kind of works, um, but uh, that just seemed to be kind of a an idea, um, and mm -hmm. that that's what I that's what I loved I liked about it because to just say I'm going to be a an instrument dealer, um, right? It's just kind of blasé, and it's too it's too the the net is too far out. You know, you need to reel it back and you need to drill down and come up, uh, look at a category as far as what you want to really concentrate on. And so I wanted to initially just concentrate on just pedals. Um, but that's evolved over over the time. And now we've, you know, I brought in synthesizers and uh, I'm, I'm evolving even more because I can I can say we just we just started, uh, we're, we're starting up our business with Tascam now. And I'm very, very excited about that. As I said, I did spend a lot of time in technology. So a lot of those technology companies do want to be a part of, of what I'm doing over here. But I've, I've always believed in really just trying to, to be a helper and a solution provider um, right. and an educator, uh, which is why I was writing books. I used to teach uh, post-production at film school. Um, unfortunately, most of those students will probably go on to just doing music videos for the rest of their lives. Uh, but it's uh, it never, nevertheless, um, that that's the thing is that uh, as far as like growing a dealership, and I've got a lot of friends that have dealerships around around the country. Uh, what I've come to find is that it it's just really important to make a connection. So yeah. uh, and just evangelize that and treat people like humans um, and not like a chain store might be. I'm not saying all chain stores are like this, but some chain stores can be kind of meat markety, you know, and just right. like uh, take one. See you later. Um, but I'd like to actually have a good relationship with the customer base. So. Sure. I work exceptionally hard at that, and yeah. it, but it pays off. Um, and you know, this year has been a big concentrate, a big concentration on on YouTube. So, growing that, growing that uh, that brand out there, trying to get to that that magical ten thousand subscribers, and we're we're less than five hundred away now. You're, everybody, uh, go that. subscribe. So if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel for the pedal guy, I'd go ask do you, it. please yeah. go do that. Go do it. You um, won't regret it. It's really yeah, good. But, Essentially, that's kind of an abbreviated thing. And I, I went, I went and got my MBA a few years ago, and it just, I just decided, look, I got to put, I got to put some pen to paper, and I got to figure out a way to, to, to make my mark on the industry rather than working for other people. I decided to work right. for myself, which, yeah. as you know, because yeah. you work for yourself, 
<laughs> it's a very it's a very scary proposition. Um, and because you know how how am I going to pay the rent next month? How am I going to pay the mortgage? How am I going to keep my lights on and my doors open? It, it, a lot of that is it takes a lot of of uh, uh, bravery, I suppose, and and insight into yeah. uh, and confidence in yourself. And I know in your you know you're you're an artist. You play on stage and you yeah. you uh, you do your thing. And I know that that it takes a lot. It takes a lot of cojones to do that. But also. The thing that I think that's really awesome about you is that you're an entrepreneur on top of all of that. Um, one of the things that I've always said about a lot of the artists I've encountered over the years is that they're amazing. They're amazing musicians, but many of them are very, and, and this could be visual arts or audible arts. It doesn't matter. Um, they could be uh, the worst self promoters in the world. Mm. And, and so yeah. they wonder why they're not succeeding. Well, why did two dimes and a nickel make a quarter? You have to get out there and you got to strut your stuff and you have to be shameless. Right. Uh, and if you're not ready to do that, then you're going to have a real tough time. Yeah. Um, not everybody can be a Tom Petty, you know, not everybody right. can be a, uh, not everybody can be an Andy Warhol. You've got to, you've got to really get out there and flaunt it and you got to be shameless. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's, that's the thing. It's like self promoters are always the ones that win the, win the game. But of course, you know, that, you know, that I'm not, I'm, I'm not telling you something you don't already know. Uh, yeah. but in any case, I mean, give us, why don't you, while we do this, let's do this in the flip, let's do this on the flip side. Give us, give me, give us uh, a little bit of background on, on you, you know, where you started in New York, obviously, yeah. and then migrate your way out here. I did. I, uh, I, I spent, um, well, I was actually born in Washington, DC. That's something people, very few people know about me. I was born in Washington, DC. Um, uh -huh. and I spent, I split my time between DC and New York and Japan, because I'm half Japanese. Uh, and I did go to school in Japan. So when people go, are you fluent? The answer is yes, I'm fluent. Yes, I, can. <laughs> I do all that. Um, but I, um, I started performing classical music as a child. And then mm -hmm. I sort of, I don't like the word retired from it, but that's basically what it is. Um, by the time I was I don't know, 11, maybe 12, maybe something like that. Um, and by the time I was like 14, 15, I was touring. I was on the road. Um, I had a band and uh, uh, yeah, then, then I was in, at that point I was going back and forth to New York and then I was in New York full time after that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I came out to LA about five years ago, almost six years ago now. Um, and uh, now I'm, I'm here and I, <laughs> I'm, I'm very blessed because I, I've been doing music. I mean, I've been doing music my whole life anyway, but since I've come to LA, um, I've been able to, I now opened a recording studio. I have a film production company. I have a media mm -hmm. company. I have all these things that are connected to music. Um, and it's interesting because they all stem from this one thing, which is exactly what you were talking about, this idea of self-promotion. And it's funny because when I was in New York, I was out there, we were touring a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And some of that was because like, we really couldn't afford to live in New York City. And so the idea was if you go out and you, you're on the road, <laughs> your expenses are covered, your fee right. is doubled because they're like, oh, so-and-so from New York. And so they must be great and we'll pay them more money. And it's like, great, <laughs> fabulous. Um, but what ended up happening was people started asking me for advice, right? Like, hey, Amigo, how did you get that gig? Or how did you get that endorsement? How did you get partnered with these people? And I just started taking phone calls, giving people advice, whatever, answering emails. And one day a girlfriend of mine said, she goes, why are you not charging people for this information? And I went, huh? What? And she said, you need to, this is a consultancy. You need to charge people money for this. This is your knowledge. Like it's worth something if they're, cause I would give them advice. They would go out and land something of their own, come back and call me and say, Hey, I got the thing. Thank you so much. It worked. She goes, you need to be charging people money. And so my first little company was born out of that. Whereas I always said like, I, I, I'm against animal testing, but I use the term like I was my own guinea pig. And I think that was a big, just like you play uh, guitar and demonstrate the pedals in your pedal guide videos, right? It's like you're speaking about it. You know about it. You're not just reading off of a sheet. So I think it's right. much more effective um, 
And it's much more authentic. Like if, if you're taking the risk, if you're actually doing the action, then, mm -hmm. then not. And so by the time I came out here, people were calling me for all sorts of weird stuff that I never thought I would be doing film scores, producing, uh, you know, playing uh, guitar for major artists, like stuff that's very, like my agent would be like, yeah, they're requesting Carlos. That's my, you know, my, my guitar. And I'd be like, well, <laughs> do they just want Carlos? Like, do they want him as a prop or do they want Emiko and Carlos? And no, no, they want you to play Carlos. Like, oh, okay. Okay. So, but it's just interesting because the way that I forged my career path was through that very thing, was through this promotion that all I was trying to do was just get more tours. And it ended up branching out into this whole um, being of it, you know, of its own kind. And now I'm sort of in the middle of it, just going, uh, okay, yes, thank you. This, this is great, you know. Um, That's good. And now we have our show. Right now we have our, right, our, we our, 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 our bi-weekly, our bi-weekly show that we do where we can That's talk true. about all this. <laughs> so we yeah. have, uh, we have so much. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, so far the show has been, you know, it's been awesome. Uh, so, uh, doing this has been fantastic. It's honestly given me the inspiration to do, you know, start looking towards what we, I may do as a weekly thing for pedal guy. Cause I've always wanted to do more questions and answer sessions with uh, the questions I get over the course of the week. And I thought it might be a little more interesting, but again, at the same time, I just don't want to be a guy who's like sitting there with a vapor, you know, just like taking long drags of the vape and looking at their, looking at their screen and all that. I just want to make it a little more interactive, a little more fun. So um, that should be, oh. you know, somewhere down the road. Um, but in any case, uh, uh, you've, you've frozen a little bit on our side there. Uh, so I'll wait Have for I? the video to catch up. Um, Am I back? The audio is going. Oh, there you are! Hi there! Hi! 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 <laughs> hi! Um, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, are you are you on Wi-Fi today, or are you on a hard wire? Are you there? Yeah, I'm back at the oh, house there in you are. LA. I'm back ah, at the house okay. in LA, and and I it's Wi-Fi here. Um, but it it, well, it does that every so often, course. and then it levels out. Well, thankfully, you know your house is you know still there. Because yeah. your house was remarkably close to the fires, so uh, saluting saluting our our firefighters here in Los Angeles for thank you for everything you do. Yes. Um, so uh, okay, so we're going to wait for the video to catch up. Ah, oh, there you are. Hi there. Um, yeah. And also hi to Yeeson Waldo. There, I see you just popped in a little yes. bit there and said hello. hello. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by. Um, anyway, I, I felt like this would be a good opportunity maybe to segue into, into your little your rig there because uh, I think uh, people would find that really interesting as far as what you're, what you're working with there with Carlos and sure. uh, with, the, uh, with Mike, uh, the, the whole setup you've got going on there. So I'll just stop rambling here and let you do your thing. So I, uh, well, I'm really proud that my, basically my entire studio is built off of um, artists and brand partnerships that I have. Um, and in that respect, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that send me hate mail because they want to have a studio like I have because <laughs> they want the partnerships, right? Which is, which is a very, I take that as a compliment. Haters to the I mean, left. <laughs> well, no, I mean, if you, if you take time out of your day to tell me that, that you really hate me because I have all these things and I'm just thinking, well, thank you for taking the time to like do your research. I really appreciate that you can never have that time back in your life. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> but I'm really, no, I, I, um, I'm really grateful for my rig. I love my rig and my rig is pretty wild. I have a behind me, I have a, you can't see it, but it's back there. I have a Hammond, I have a Hammond SK one, mm -hmm. which is like my main, which is like my main keyboard. Um, I actually have a, a Hammond M downstairs and then we have an a100 at the studio uh -huh. so we are and then i have a hammond in las vegas so we are a oh no and an sk1 at the studio we are a five hammond family Excellent. that's a lot of hammonds there's like one for every one. day of the work week um and uh and i'm you know i'm brilliantly proud to be on their roster and and be representing them um and then i have my Oh, okay. Mirror image. Um, my VX49, my Alesis controller, which I love. And I have a VI61 in Vegas as well. 
Um, and this, I'll tell you, the 49 is a brilliant controller in my personal opinion, not just because I endorse Elisis, but because um, I was using it prior. Mm -hmm. Well, I was using the VI series prior, I should say. Um, and I also have, when I was traveling, because you know, I was traveling like every week. Yes. Um, my V mini. And I would literally be, I would literally be in midair and I would get a message from my publisher and he'd say, Hey, uh, we farmed you out to do this TV show and they need, here's some briefs and they need samples like by seven o'clock tonight. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm over the Rocky mountains right now. And I would literally pull out the V mini plop it on this tiny little airplane table, right? Pull right. up my laptop and go to work. And I can't tell you how many times Elisa has literally saved my butt on a gig because of that. Um, and then of course, Carlos, my dear, my dear Kitar, um, and his sister Carlotta. And Carlos has been with me for, gosh, I don't know how many years now, but he's, um, he's really reliable. He's really reliable. Um, and he, I tell you the thing about Carlos that I love is I hook him up to my, this is something that not a lot of people do. I hook him up to my MXR to my talk box. <laughs> um, and so the thing that people don't realize is yes, you can hook up a wireless MIDI controller to a talk box. It takes a minute <laughs> and there is a, like a sort of a jerry rigged daisy chain thing that you have to do, but you can do it. Um, and I've been meaning to make a video about it forever because there's all of these videos on how to hook up your talk boxes for certain things, but you can't, you can perform with it, but you can't record with it. And I found the way to record with it. So I just have to like have a minute to make that video, I think. The secret sauce. Kinda, 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 kinda. Um, yeah, and then uh, what else can I show you that I that I have? Oh, two, I guess well, two. Let, let's take a step back. Uh, sure. Just real quick. So um, for those of our, our viewers out there that are still kind of like new, because the way I promoted this video on the YouTube channel was that this was going to be like a, you know, Vortex sort of, um, uh, not demo really, but just like, you know, just talk about it a little bit as far as like how it's being used in your setup. It's, oh, it's, sure. it's being used as a controller um, because it doesn't actually have sounds in it, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or That's it correct. It, no, right. Carlos, Carlos only has soul. He doesn't have sounds. Right. So that's like a really important thing to point yeah. out because a lot of the things you're just showing were controllers. And the thing is that your your secret is that you, you're using it with software synthesizers. I um, Right. I do, I do a lot of sound design um, right. and I will start with specifics. And what's interesting for me is like I only use Carlos for certain sounds. I'll use mm -hmm. Carlotta for other sounds. I don't know why, because really, if you think about it, like it is just a, con I'm sorry, Carlos, it's just a controller. So you could, I could be using, I could be using the VX49, right? Like I could be, but right. I talked about this yesterday in a podcast actually about how, no, it was in an interview. I lied. When, um, sometimes people will specifically request me on a track and they'll say, well, can you play guitar? And mm -hmm. I'll be like, yeah, but I could just do it. Uh, no, but we want, cause it affects the performance. It does. It, it absolutely does. How you deliver it. And so in that respect, that's why I say Carlos has soul, but he doesn't have sounds and mm -hmm. he only works. He really effectively only works with certain sounds. And well, I don't mean know, all Elisa's Vortexes work that way. Mm -hmm. I just mean Carlos specifically. I'm sure you can get one from Sweetwater that works great with all sounds. But for me, that's, that's the unique thing for me. Don't buy it from Sweetwater. Buy it from us. Um, <laughs> do, do you have, well, do you have one? We can get them. We can certainly okay. get them. Uh, it's never, never been a problem. We're, we're actually in discussions within music for more, uh, more of their products now, because Good. as you know, people who follow me know that I'm, I'm a big old head rush user. Right. I, I love the head rush family and that's part of the in music family. If those of you are, you know, living in a cave. Um, right. so that means, you know, I have access to Elisis, Newmark, Akai, all that stuff. Right. It's just that, yeah. frankly, again, it's about expanding it out. But yeah. I want to go back to that one thing you were just talking about. So, um, cause it, I, I, I'm just going to go off the ledge here a little bit and, and sure. make a, make a, a theory is that it's, a, it's because you're, you're standing with the instrument and you're, you're attacking the instrument like a guitar 
like a different type of instrument altogether, even though it is a keyboard. And while you could, yes, do it on a, a keyboard that's on a stand, right. the feeling you take to it is is, is totally different. It's, it's like I saw something with, with Katie Tunstall talking about the same exact thing about how she gets her loops going live on stage is that she actually incorporates a little bit of, of actual body the movement, movement. Yeah. you know, and it's because right. you're getting into that groove, you're getting into the pocket of the groove. Right. And you're going to approach it differently as a result of that. Well, the, you know, the other thing that, um, that the Vortex has that's different from any other controller, even the Alesis controllers themselves, right? Even just the, the linear, like the traditional controllers is um, the, the pitch bend Mm -hmm. And yes, the 49 has a pitch bend and a, and a mod wheel on it, but it's, it feels different. Uh, right. Yeah. And this Absolutely. also has a tilt shift on it. So if I turn it on and I hit the tilt shift button, what ends up happening is some, you'll see like in a lot of my videos, I'm, if I'm standing up, I'll sort of be swaying the guitar up and down like this. And it actually changes the wave. Um, oh, there you go. And, and so the, in that sense, I think performing and recording on the guitar um, adds different, literally different dimensions because you're not just playing right keyboard across. Mm -hmm. Now you have to play this way, which means you're going up and down, but with the tilt shift, you're also controlling forward and backwards, side to side, front to back, right? Like up and down. So now you're incorporating a whole sphere in terms right. of your sonic delivery. Why don't, you, why don't you hold that up to the camera real close so people can see the, the work you did on, on Carlos here? Because it's, it's something else, really. Look at that. I mean, that Oops. is sexy. <laughs> they are, and I've had so many people ask me um, where they could get one. And I, and I always tell them, no, you can't. And I've had people, I can't tell you how many DMs that I got from people saying, can you make me one? like that to, and, and your response is <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 my, my response, my response is always to forward it to my reps and my team mm -hmm. at Alesis and say, Hey, so I know we started talking about making the Emiko guitar, right? Cause people want it. So let's push Think that conversation forward a little bit. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, if, if, if we did it, we, we've been talking about it for a while. Um, and if we did it, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a Carlos. It would be something else because Carlos is very special to me. But um, it would be similar potentially, mm -hmm. and there would be some options. So we've been, you know, I mean, COVID has, I think, s slowed down a lot of those types of discussions. But it has, um, it, it has been on the table for a while. So it's, yeah. it, it's been a difficult one, hasn't it? Because um, I, I can at least speak from the retail side that it's, it, it has been difficult in, in getting consistent inventory um, overseas to yeah. meet demand because demand has gone up just unbelievably this whole year as, as far as the pedal guy goes. Uh, I mean, when you're on a first name basis with your post office, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sure. with the guys at the work at the at the FedEx offices, I know this is not the sexy part of the music industry, guys. But this is how the this is how the sausage is made. So right, um, sure. you, you gotta again, it's all about service because you know guys gonna choose. How is a person gonna choose you over over another dealer? It's how right. fast you react, right? And how fast you get things done. So right. it, it all plays it all plays into the role there. But anyway, um, okay, enough of that. That, but um, the uh, I. I I'm so the the thing that has been a challenge all year long is getting consistent supply, yeah. and also of course the the fact that people are working from home and they don't exactly have the time for the innovations that are needed for this year. So mm. we'll probably be off by year. So I'd say 2021 and 2022 are going to be pretty freaking awesome because yeah. all those ideas that have been kind of sitting back in the uh, in the back of the closet now they'll have time to actually get back in and do it. Right. Um, so yeah. that'll be that'll be interesting. In fact, I just got word yesterday that. Uh, they, they've officially pushed out, not that this is a huge surprise, but they've officially pushed out Synthplex to next year right. um, at this time. So uh, you never know at this time next year, we might be broadcasting from Synthplex because um, it's going to happen about that. this time, in right. fact, next year. I would love uh, that. That should be fun. I had a whole booth planned. It was going to be the booth from heaven. Nice. Um, 
other other manufacturers wish they could have a booth this awesome. And uh, it, it, yeah, we had to put it on hold, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to it. We get to it. I I, I even had a, a couple of people that were going to come and work because the the guy from Depeche Mode would be walking around. Nice. So it's your chance to see Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Don't you want to see him as he's being pushed right by you down the hallway? Right. And, right. I breathe the same air that he breathes. For like two <laughs> but, Which is but, funny right now. It's like it's COVID. It's like, I don't right. want to breathe anybody's right. air. <laughs> I got COVID from Depeche Mode. It's fancy COVID. That's a freaking t-shirt if I ever heard one. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. let's do the, let's do, let's do this. Let's talk about the, let's talk more about the, 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 now the synth setup you've got going on there. So you're, you're doing everything in logic and yeah. you're doing it with, you're doing it with, uh, soft sense. And yep. I'm hoping somewhere down the road, we'll be able to actually do multicam. So we'll be able to actually show people screenshots of what's being, what's going on at the same time. So we'll have to just yeah. use our, our imagination boys and girls. Um, what, uh, what soft sense are you using in logic? So at the moment, it depends on what, it depends on what I'm doing. Um, but, I'll usually start with something innocuous, like just a regular standard synth lead. Mm -hmm. um, the key is polyphonic or not, depending on what I want to do. Um, because sometimes you need it and sometimes you don't. It depends. Uh, but what I will do is it's not enough to, for me, I don't like ever having the same sound the same patch as, as keyboard players like to say. I like to change it up. So even if I do multiple recordings and multiple performances of, a, of, of, a, of the same song, people will say, mm -hmm. sounds different. And I, was, I know, because <laughs> I changed it. But I remember everything that I, I remember everything I do. I have it all written down. I have it all mapped out. Um, so typically uh, it'll go through a super overdrive of some sort, it'll go through, or a fuzz. Um, cause I really like, I really like that. Um, I, I will always put a flanger or a chorus on it. Sometimes both ring modulators are a big deal for me. Big, 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 big deal. I love playing with ring modulation patterns. Um, and then, uh, depending on what it is, a shit ton of delay. Yeah. And, and, and of course, I think when you're, when you're designing sounds, you can play with waveforms. So that also makes things very bizarre. Sometimes they do cross the line into being bizarre and you just go, oh, dial it back a little bit there. Um, sure. But but it's an interesting opportunity because I'll play with the, the quote unquote, the virtual pedal board um, in the DAW, but I also have this ginormous, thing here which is a lot heavier than it looks it's not it's not as impressive as a guitarist's pedal board necessarily and i've got a couple pedals that are downstairs but these are generally my go-to's and i do use um the pedals in terms of when i print to audio i'll design things over it or mm -hmm. i'll use them for vocal processing yeah, that's a good way to go too so like um Lounsbury has a this and the tall, fat, and wide, and I'll use this, run it with the microphone. That's one of the things a lot of people don't know about the Lounsburys is that technically they're all preamps. Right. Um, if you get Greg talking about it, he'll talk about it yeah. uh, quite a bit. But it, it actually works quite well as the, like the tall and fat actually works quite well as a mic pre. Yeah. So yeah. I, it would definitely go up against most of the other ones that I've that I've I've used over the years of mic pre. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but uh, so uh, what's your go to what's the go to soft synth like the first one you reach if you're going to like say I need a patch like right now, like oh, what, boy, what would be the one boy. that what's the what's your desert island? <laughs> if I said if, <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face, if I said ice rain midi number 96. No, I'm just kidding. That's ah. so that's so 80s. No, 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 no. My I'm, I'm literally I'm pulling up logic right now. I uh, I would. I have, I have a lead. Because I'm going to ah. get you to play. I'm going to get you to play a couple notes for us. Okay. Because uh, we got technology working we, today, so we, let's use it. We do. Um, okay. So I'll either go for something that's a stacked synth. Um, that sounds like a. That sounds like a. Um, a very poor um, representation of a guitar. Mm -hmm. I will either do that because I'll start there and then make it something else so that it blends oftentimes with what my guitar player is doing. Um, right. Or I'll go straight up synth 
like right now I have a, something called a sweeping lead, which I don't, I don't know what I've done. Now, it's, been a, it's been a tick since I've used Logic. So is there actually like, a, is it like a, um, is there a model number of that? Of no, that is, or? it just says sweeping lead. And then I would literally yeah. go in and so it sounds, can you guys hear that? Oh, I can hear it. So that's what it sounds like on its own with nothing, right? right? Um, but then if I were to, I don't know, if I were to, I don't have it And then I would literally start running it through all the pedals, which are not hooked up because all my powers are right behind me and my, I don't have an extension cord. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, you know, leads that cut. The right. other thing, the other thing, um, is I, I really enjoy, I've been told that I enjoy sounds that are obnoxious. Well, and, <laughs> synthesizers in general can be obnoxious by default at times. I, so, but the thing is, is that how to use it tastefully, how do you make it work in the mix? Right. I, I think um, I think I do enjoy things that cut a lot. Sure. You know, that, yeah. that aren't it's your voice. It's it's right, it's my voice and, and as a keyboard player. What we lost you there. We lost you. I hear I hear a little bit coming there. Um, Did I go away? Up, okay, I can hear your voice. Up oh, there, you are. Am I back? Okay, you're back. You're um, back. Okay, so uh, the my thing has been always fighting with the guitar player because well, I think you know, also we do, love to, we do like to fight. That's <laughs> it, do, it does come into play. Well, I was I was remember I mean I was 14 when I started touring, and so I had a group of my band was literally older men. And so they did have this attitude of like, this one goes to 11, you know, uh -huh. this one goes to 35. So um, I always found that there was a deficit in terms of like, we would get the video back or whatever, the audio or the board recording. And it's like, man, all I hear is the guitar. I don't hear anything. And he'd be, oh no, no, the keyboards are there. You're just not listening the right way. And it's like, no, I don't think that's what happened. Cause you get louder and louder as you go. So. I learned early on, you got to find stuff that cuts and that puts mm -hmm. people in their place and that claims your space, right? You're planting a flag in that sense. Um, sure. And and that works, that, that harmonically works. And I think that where the frequencies don't kill each other, right? They don't cancel each other out. They don't muddy together, but right. they work to elevate each other properly. And that's something that um, I'm painfully aware of as well. Mm -hmm. And, and in terms of designing sounds, that's, that's something that I love to tinker with. I, I admittedly, I haven't had a whole lot of time to, to do sound design lately. Um, e even when I'm working with the guitars, most of the time I'm just cranking out demos. It takes more time just to get the what's actually in them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in these processes in my thumbs uh, before I uh, do a demo. Um, and uh, I, I totally get I totally get where you're coming from with the sounds. Uh, you, you have the you have the the reverse genesis problem, or your bands had the reverse genesis problems, where the, <laughs> they they there were so many complaints after the remasters came out a couple of years ago that they buried the guitars all the way in the back and they yeah. brought Tony Banks's keyboards like all the way up to the front. And I'm like, well, you do know Genesis isn't exactly known for being a guitar band lately. I mean, yes, back in the '70s, sure, Steve Hackett did his thing, but right. I mean, let's face it. Nobody goes and listens to Invisible Touch and goes, man, that guitar sounds, sounds great. That's awesome, yeah. You know? <laughs> they're, they're listening to the keyboard parts. Right, um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, eat that. Uh, anyway, I totally I totally get where you're coming from. Uh, what I'm hoping for, frankly, is that there, that New X is going to eventually do a do something for keyboards for this particular product, for the, for the MG300, because it isn't exactly tuned for bass or for keys yet. Uh, but it's all digital, so it's only a matter of time before they they get the itch to do it. Because um, so far, this product has actually done remarkably well. 
Um, and it's actually been one of the most popular products on the, the, the Pedal Guy YouTube channel, frankly. So, But there's nothing that says, like, I was thinking, I was watching that, and I was looking at it, and I thought, you know, I could hook that up to my Hammond. You could do it. You could do it. But it's like it's like the problem with the with the that that solved with the uh, Lounsbury pedals, you know, because the Lounsbury pedals are tuned for keyboards, right. they're tuned for the entire frequency spectrum. So you don't sure. get the mid range that you would get from like using just like a standard overdrive, like a tube screamer or something. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, you get a totally. And so that's kind of the same thing here. That's not to say it can't be done. It can certainly right. be done. But they need they need to put more uh, impulse responses and. Uh, and key and amps that really are kind of tuned for other things, just other than just guitar. Otherwise, it's doesn't doesn't make any sense. Um, however, I mean, it could be done. There's always ways to do it. But the cool thing about this, and I think that what's what's great about this particular product is that it does reamping at yeah. 150 bucks, which it, it's been amazing to me. One of the things that's been really cool about this evolution of technology is that in the beginning, back in the 90s, and I'm not kidding, this is 90s people, we were talking about impulse responses back in the 90s. But back then it was called acoustic stamping. And I thought, this is the future. This is going to be the hottest thing ever. Um, and nobody got it. Like right. not a one person got it, uh, no matter how much we talked about it. And the same thing goes for reamping. We were talking about all that crap back then because reamping actually goes back to the 70s. Right. Um, but doing it in a digital environment was very uh it was it was pretty unheard of you mm -hmm. know aside from a few other things that line six was doing so it, it kind of laid dormant for a while along with irs and then all of a sudden in these last couple of years impulse responses have just been blown up because people realized i don't have to schlep around a big giant cabinet anymore i could yeah. just use an impulse response <gasps> and uh, it, it opened people's minds up um, and that's the beauty of it. And this thing does it for 150 bucks and it's that's not, a, it's not a piece of garbage either. It really isn't yeah. as far as what you get out of it. The, the amp modeling inside of it is pretty damn good, frankly. Yeah. yeah. But I will say, I will say to, to one of the, the points you made earlier about delays mm -hmm. is that I, I love me some delay. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos, you know, I love delay. However, I also live in the real world for guitar players that, too much delay is not really a good thing, especially with some of the patches in here mm. that there's so much delay in it that it's like, if you were to play that with a band, um, even the edge would come out and say, you're using too much delay, mate. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I can't do an Irish accent, so sorry, I can't do it. But it, even, even the edge would come out and tell you you're using too much delay. And if he's telling you you're using too much delay, you're, you're using, using too much delay. delay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So dial that shit back already. Yeah. Um, uh, but in any case, yeah. Uh, 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 why don't you play a couple of uh, licks real quick on the on the guitar there, and uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll plug in a, a guitar here so we can uh, you guys can get a listen to what this thing sounds like. So what are you what are you using right now? I don't understand so you, your question. You, I, you're still using the same patch you're using before. Oh yeah, yeah, it's just on here. I mean, I can switch it here. I'll switch it up. Hold on. I can switch it up because it's easy to switch it up. It was easy a second ago. Hold on. Are you are you are you working on new jingles? I what was the one everybody hates it? Bum, 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 bum. There you D minor. Go. All right, we can go with D minor, the saddest of all keys. <laughs> yes. Boy, Christopher Guest is probably never going to live that down as long no. as he lives. <laughs> truth, truth. I'm not going to do anything to. Uh, you mean Spinal Tap isn't a real band? Sadness. I saw them actually play. Did you? Yeah, they played it. They played at Nam one year. They did a, a an after Nam show. Oh, that's right. uh, for sure. I still even have the T-shirt around somewhere. That's right. That's right. Hold on. I, I also uh, have my guitar here too. So, let's see. I uh, and I will say this, just so people know, oh, anybody that thinks that uh, guitar players are the only ones that noodle, I can tell you how many times I've been on a phone call, literally sitting just like this, and on speakerphone, and I just start. Keytar players have noodle-itis just as much as guitar players. 
<laughs> we do. It's so bad. But I don't do it when I'm sitting at the keyboard. That's what's so weird. I don't know. It's all about if, if it's vertical, you can noodle. If it's horizontal, you can't. This is really made for standing up, but I don't want to stand up right now. So what are you doing right there with the bar on the left to, to explain to our viewers if they're, if they're kind of... This bar? Yeah. This is an expression bar. So the expression right. bar... Uh, hold on. <laughs> so also, just so you know, it's got these... Uh, which way am I going? I'm going this way. Draw... <laughs> You can't see them because they're all glittery, but uh, there's there's these draw bars here. Mm. They're, as uh, a girlfriend of mine would call them jokingly, slidey bar things. That's our, that's our studio term, slidey bar things. Faders. Um, and they also give you some effects controls remotely, which is great. So like if you're using main stage or whatever, you can go through. And, um, and you have um, drum, like you've got patch pads yeah. here as well. So um, so this is the expression bar, which typically works better. I might change it back to synth because you can hear it more. I'll just do that. All right. La, 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 la. Yeah, you, you give us some stuff now. Fancy man. Hopefully that's in tune. Well, you know, I got to tell you, one of the things about doing videos for full time for YouTube is always one of the most it's always one of the most difficult things is getting over yourself and just like getting past the stage fright and all that. Cause you know, I don't play, I don't play live really anymore. You um, should. Well, I, I'd like to, but I just don't have any bloody time. Um, so uh, sorry, I had to throw in an Englishism in there and uh, I, I just don't have any time to play live anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm so busy doing what I do now. Just getting those trio Tuesdays done was a hell of a thing. And I've got this whole plan for for doing live performances with the Looper board in a very near future from oh, the loft, okay. which will be which will be fun because you can sync it up with the with the other headbrush now. So, right. aha, synced up effects. It's going to be beautiful. Um, but uh, so it, you know, the other thing too is, and this is a, I was a victim of, a victim of working at the the chain store I mentioned before when you're working in management. There mm -hmm. are so many talented musicians that work yeah. there that now are like all about the business but yeah. when they do let loose and they start noodling i'm scared to death to play anything around them because frankly a lot of those guys could play circles around me but then you kind of just realize well i'm just trying to show the product i'm not trying to make people think i'm like some sort of steve Vai or satriani because that's definitely right. not what i am um and nor should i be uh so yeah you just kind of get over it and move on yeah so there <laughs> Besides, people don't care. They just want to hear, like, you know, what does it sound like with power chords? Well, exactly. Hopefully in tune, though. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. It's Take not the worst there. thing in the world. I I live near a chain store. Well, uh, I think we I think we got you again there. We have the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi uh, gnomes. You coming back yet? Hello. Am I back? You're back. I just knew I just noodled for like the the, the twenty seconds I was out. I just went, that's cool, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, so the expression bar. Yeah. That's you were Oh, I think we lost you again. In the meantime, uh, let me just do a couple quick shout out here while uh, Miko's Wi-Fi is catching up here. Uh, Dean, great to have you. Giles, what's going on? Thank you very much for uh, for joining us. Um, and uh, we'll be uh, doing more of those. Oh, I, I see your eyes. Move. Okay, what? That, I see your hand moving. All right, you're you're back. <laughs> Giles is saying he needs. Giles is saying he needs an opinion on a musical instrument. Giles, okay, Giles. What is, what's the opinion you need? Because one of us is going to have the answer. I hope. 
Well, we'll wait for it to come back. But in the meantime, what you were you were you were noodling? I was noodling. The uh, the expression bar changes. Oh, here it is. Hold on. So it adds a lot of for. I don't want to get too technical with it because people people tend to, I think, zone out after that. But they, um, it adds extra panache, I think, especially with sustained notes is a good place to use it. And it just changes. Right? But then if you put it on the touch shift, see? I was gonna call that the, uh, that's the, the Rico Kasich effect. I'll take it. That, it sounds like it sounds like it belongs in a Cars tune. I'm okay with that. That's fine. Awesome. So Giles uh, wrote his question here. Uh, so he's asking you what you think about the Rolly uh, Seaboard. I think it's brilliant. I love it. It's awesome. And what's uh, what's so awesome about it? Well, it's not like anything. I I don't think it's anything like anything out there on the market. I think what you can do with it expressively is. Um, I wouldn't say di different is the wrong word because because everybody says different, but there's a lot more you can do with it than mm -hmm. a traditional keyboard. Um, I also think that if you use it as a supplement or as an addition to what you already have, you can get more right. mileage out of it as opposed to like, I have a Rolly and that's all I use. And I mean, you're not Jordan Rudess, sorry. <laughs> None of us are. There is only um, one Jordan. There's only one Jordan. It's true, and there's a lot of Jordan there to love. So, um, so yeah. But I would, I would say, why, Giles? Are you looking to invest in one, or is this just some sort of question that you're curious about because you saw an ad somewhere? I'm just, I'm just asking. So this, worth, this is the one. That, this is the one that's got that rubberized the the rubberized keys, right? Yeah, it's all black. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't had a chance to goof around with those. I've I've seen them for the last couple of years. I need to hire you guys to create 10 seconds of music for my channels. Okay, well, Giles, we can, why don't you DM, send a DM and we can talk about that. That's, that's, that's easy enough to do. Um, yes, looking to, yes, looking ought by oh, looking to buy one. You should get one. It's worth, I think it's totally worth getting. Absolutely. Um, that's good to know. I, I hit the I hit the uh, the top the uh, I hit the tuning bridge is a little too much there on the the light stand over here so it's gone out of tune, which I just can't stand playing an out of tune guitar. It's That's one of the nice things about it's one of the nice things about uh, keyboards. You don't have to worry about it going out of tune because this is in the seventies. Wrong. So, uh, That's not. Worry about Hammonds Hammonds tend to Hammonds tend to. Uh, decay and bend over every once in a while, depending on their age. Right. Uh, ah, now we're back. There you go. <laughs> oh boy. Nice. So, what you know? One thing that's cool about you is you you incorporate the music into your into your videos. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch a route and ask you a question now. How long oh. does it take you to learn? Like, so so you get the pedals in, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, and you pump these videos out weekly. Like they're incredible production value and musical value and information value. But how long does it take you to learn the pedal? Like if it's something that say you haven't used before, right? Obviously. It's a good question. Um, the the short answer is uh, pretty much a day to to do the whole thing from start to finish. Um, a day is what eight eight hours, ten hours, five hours. A couple hours. Um, I mean, and, and I'm not saying it because I've been doing this for a really long time, but I've been yeah. doing this for a really long time. Yeah. So right. when I use a when when I've been using overdrives and distortions since like the dawn of time, when I use another distortion or overdrive. I, I have to find a way to talk about it differently than the other ones. Um, and so what I really concentrate on more is I concentrate more on my playing mm. on those particular pedals more than I actually concentrate on the facts about the pedal mm -hmm. because, hey, it's a distortion pedal and it's red. Right. Um, 
it and it's like that's that's not the right way to approach it. Yeah. Um, the right way to approach it is showing playing that actually complements what that product does. Uh, <coughs> for example, sorry, um, this morning I, I launched uh, a video on the uh, on the Plexi Crunch from mm -hmm. uh, Nuex, which is part of the reissue series, and it's a Plexi. It's a Plexi amp. Now, how would I play a Plexi amp? I'm not going to play it the same way I play, um, say, a, a Dumble, mm -hmm. um, which is the other pedal that they make, the Steel Singer. It has the same exact controls. Right. Almost, but I'm not going to play it exactly the same way. You've got to like work the chords out. Yeah, and you got to play something that's a lot different, and that's where the real challenge is. It's like just coming up with. Um, let's see, do I have my guitars back up? Yeah. Oh, yep. Uh, I think I lost. Oh, I lost the connection. That's what happened. Um, ah! Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, as I said earlier, I Frankenstein this thing together. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Now let's bring that back a little bit. Okay. So let's see. This is the emotional ballad. I don't like the way that one sounds. Let me find another one here. Okay. So the Steve Vai one here, because this is a Steve Vai preset. So um, I'm not sure which amp it's using, but if you're going to play something like, uh, you know, speed metal type of, you know, something like that, obviously a delay is not going to work. So you've got to find like the the thing that's going to do it. Like, first of all, you you want to kill the delay. You want to kill the delay altogether. Right. You don't want that. And if you want reverb, uh, it's typically not the best way to do it. So you got to like hone the sound out a little bit and then work on the on the chords you want to play. Right. Because it, it, I play almost the same chords on every one of the videos I do. Really, because I've got like my go-to things that I do, but really? it's about it's well, yeah. I mean, it's just in different styles. So it's interesting because, but, you know. but when you watch your videos, though, they're they're different enough that you don't think of like it's not obvious, right? You don't think about it that way because I think you you make them very unique. Well, I, I I try to do something a little different to just let people know, hey, look, this is what you can do. Because I, I yeah. try to think of the pedals as um instruments into themselves uh, they are they they have complete expression and right. and that's the thing it's like you've got to find a way to express it so like i said before like using the plexi crunch i i concentrate more on the tonality of it uh and how you can use volume swells to really affect the way that it works mm -hmm. um because what will happen is people will buy it and they'll think well if i stick this into my plexi uh, amp how is a plexi pedal going to sound against a plexi amp well okay this is how it will sound right. um but make sure that you're doing you know doing what needs to be done as far as like the tone control and the volume control but then again the other thing and we've, we've talked about this before is it's you know it's here right. and it's here and it's here um you can have the exact same setup that i have here and you'll come out with probably a different result than i will yeah um and that's you know, that's something else that i think people sometimes forget about that when they're buying these products because they think I'm going to sound just like Eddie Van Halen, um, rest in peace, Eddie. Yeah. Um, but uh, or I'm going to sound like Steve Vai, or I'm going to sound like Slash, or something like that. There's really only, like you said, to your point, there's only one Jordan, there's only one Eddie, there's only one Stevie, there's only one Satch. Um, so you've got to find your own voice, and that's what the pedals are there for. They're that's tools cool. to help you make that happen. But yeah. find your own voice. Don't 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 just do it just because everybody else is doing it. Yeah, uh, and uh, you'll you'll get there. But Absolutely. yeah, all all the videos really, most of them only take a couple of hours, honestly. Um, now with the MG three hundred, it's a little more complicated because there's so much to talk about. So yeah. here's one of the secrets of the trade, um, as far as video production goes. You have to write a list. Mm -hmm. You have to list everything out, and you have to think about everything you're going to talk about. So do we do a video about this? Do we do a video about that? Like if you go back to the beginning of pedal guy, you'll see that there are some videos that are like 30 minutes long. Mm. I mean, frankly, the fact that I got anybody to pay attention for more than 10 minutes is crazy. Um, <laughs> it, it's impossible. So you've got to bring it down into easily right. digestible chunks. Yeah. And so one week I'll talk about reamping the next week. I'll talk like this week. I'm going to do another video on the MG 300. It's probably the last one I'll do for a while. Where I'm going to talk about how to use it as an audio interface. Right. Um, and that's three to five minutes all by itself. Uh, and that's the thing, just, you, you have to plan it out. Otherwise you'll be sitting here all day long trying to figure it out and it, it just cuts down on productivity, but then you've got to dump it into an editing computer 
Um, yeah. And I use Magix as my editor. Uh, it's the one that works. It's it's it is the the Final Cut Pro for PC. I don't care what any other PC editor uses. This is what I use, and I it love works, it. Works for you, and your videos look great. So I mean, yeah. you know, I think, and that's the other thing I would say about pedals. Yeah. And after that, we'll answer Dean's question. Um, yeah. But you know, so many people. I think you and I both have been through this. We're so. <laughs> I've been through it being a guitar player for sure, where. People will, I think, kind of come out and make fun of you or they'll judge you on the basis of what your rig is, what your pedal board looks like, what you have on there. Oh, so but, you know, for me it's like, oh, cool, you play guitar, you're bringing it back. And my answer is, yo, man, it never left. Like maybe yeah. you maybe your cool factor went to sleep for a couple of years. But I'm here to tell you. That. I mean, because synth, synth, synth has always been around in every style of music, this is the thing. Synth is one thing that has transcended every genre of music, right. including, including. Oh, we lost you there again. She has gone into the Wi-Fi Phantom Zone. Up, oh, what? There she is. Are you back? Nope. Oh, okay, we got you in another freeze frame where you're like this now. Uh, so we'll we'll wait for you to. Up oh, there, you are. Have you come back yet? Or are you still catching up there? Well, I think she's still catching up. Oh, hi Am there. Am I back? You are back, yes. Okay, let's answer Dean's question. Let's answer Before Dean's question, yes. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Oh, I guess I, I guess we can't quite just yet. I can answer um, it. It's the wireless MIDI. Is it? Am I back? You're back. You're back. Uh, yes, wireless MIDI is built into. So ah, shit. Okay, I think we lost you again. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, technology. What a. Uh, sometimes it's one step forward, two steps back. Are, are you back with us yet? I'm back. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Okay, hi. Okay. Uh, wireless MIDI is built in, and uh, Alesis uses, uh, I think, the same as everybody else, two point four gigs. That's their frequency. Right. Yeah, so, we do the same thing with uh, some of the new wireless stuff that's coming out for key, for a guitar as well, like the yeah. new X, the uh, B, B5RC is all 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, this has a this has a really long range as well. And it's plug and play. That, that's the other thing for whatever it's worth. I, this wasn't meant to be a commercial for Alesis, but I'm a walking commercial for Alesis. It's plug and play. And as Scott yeah, saw, like this morning, it comes with a USB stick. And I literally just pop it into the back of my computer, open my DAW, and it's there, like there's no drivers, there's no sync it, there's no enter a code, it's just plug and play, done. Now, if you lose that, if you lose that key, you're screwed though, because each USB key is assigned to each vortex. So you can't go and get a replacement key and then just have it be for any, right? Like, cause I have, like right. I have three, and you can't take the I can't use Carlotta's key for Carlos. They're not interchangeable. Mm. Or they weren't the last time I lost mine, they weren't. I maybe they've switched that around, but I've literally not so like my iLox and my USB vortex keys are all they all reside in one very particular place because I don't want to lose them. <laughs> So not so, to put too fine a point on it, keep it under lock and key. Gee, exactly. <laughs> there you go, yes. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're getting punchy, I think. Um, but what I was trying to say, apparently, before I was thrown into Wi-Fi purgatory, was that I think, you know, the pedals, anything that you play musically, no matter what level you are, no matter what genre you're in, it's all about expressing yourself. And for people that judge you, like Scott and I go back and forth and we'll occasionally trade insults on certain, not brands, but certain um, products or components just sort of lap, like just in good nature, right? But the truth is, is that if we ever met somebody that used one of those products, we would not, um, we would not speak down to them. I think what would happen is we would, maybe inquire why they chose that particular piece. And if it works for them, that's great. And we would support that. But if it if we saw there were some missing links there, maybe we could 
educate and recommend something, right? Another additional choice or something, but it's not, this is not about judging people. Like judging people is not cool. It doesn't, no. it's not too cool at all. Um, not in the least. And I think, um, I think that's something that he and I, like we really get along on is the idea that we can have any, I mean, my delay, my little delay pedal is probably as old as the first Model T. Maybe not quite, but. Oh, I remember that. I remember that this, one. This is all, like, she gets, she gets social security payments in the mail. <laughs> oh, but she works and people look at it and they're like, oh, you know, and I've got people that go, why are you using that one? That's so old. And then I've got people that go, wow, that's so cool. I haven't seen one of those in years. And so, right. But it works. Works for me. Well, you know, uh, who's who's the artist I'm thinking of right now? Lindsay Buckingham, you know, because uh -huh. everybody's talking so much about about Fleetwood Mac these days, yeah. thanks to that TikTok video. Um, Lindsay still, I, I, maybe it's changed in the last couple of years, but up until just a couple of years ago, he was still using ADATs because he just refused to use um, any any sort of DAW. It was not right. a DAW guy, um, right. and it's because he was able to make it work for him. Right. And maybe that thing's as old as dirt. Yeah. Um, if you're on this cast, you've never seen an ADAT before. Well, you're not missing much, but still go have a look at it just for historical sake. Uh, yeah. Remember, I, I still have a BRC lying around here somewhere for, for synchronization. Yeah. Nice. Whoa, we'll have to do something on sync one of these days. Oh, yeah. But uh, that's the thing. It's just like, I'm not going to put the guy down for that. He's, <laughs> yeah. Does he, do I have a, a chart topping album? No. Do I have several chart topping albums? No, but he does, and it works for him. So good for him. Uh, Prince was kind of the same thing with keys. You know, he had like his go to patches that he always used on his keyboards. And you thought that, oh, he sits all day and just finds new patches. No, he goes right to his stock patch, and that's what he used. Yeah. But he's freaking Prince, and he could do whatever the hell he wanted to do. So right. let him let him do his thing. And I'm that's it's about mutual respect. And I've had people come at me about all sorts of things with my playing or the way a video is sent. Like I, I keep, and I keep those up like badges of honor, unless it's something that's like really honestly degrading and demeaning, then I yeah. send them out to purgatory. But um, I had one guy say that uh, Engel should issue a cease and desist letter against me for my playing on one of the, the pedal videos. And I was like, wow, seek therapy guy. But it's, it's what it is. And that's fine. Everybody's going to have an opinion. Uh, you know what they say about, Oh, Dean, hey, there you go. Steve Howe just recorded his latest album on all ADATs. Well, see, there you go. Awesome. Um, he's Steve friggin' Howe. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to tell the guy what to do. He's he's a genius. But um, that's the thing. It's like just you know, keep your attitude in check and just be humble. A little humility goes a long way in this business. Right. That Yes, confidence is very important, obviously, but you know, don't, don't think that you have to get your pants custom tailored to hold those cojones. You got to be just, you know, keep it in check and, and, and just be humble a little bit and it goes a long way. Well, the, the other thing uh, I think is like people, people assume, and this is something that I went through. Um, people assume that because you have a specific piece of gear that you only play to a specific level, right. but really if you're a consummate player, like if you're a beast on your instrument or whatever your particular craft is, you can rock anything that's brought to you. And so Sometimes, like for me, everybody's like, well, why don't you play Roland AX synth? And I'm like, Roland's great. I'll never speak against Roland, not because I want to be politically correct, but because I genuinely believe that Roland products are wonderful. And, and I know a lot of the guys over there and they're great people and they're really well made and they take care of their artists. That's great. For me, and I played the AX synth. I used to have an AX7. Mm -hmm. But for me, when the Vortex appeared at my front door, it, it was a personality match. I got it, right? right? And and so this is where I feel most comfortable. I'll give you I'll give you an example. When when I was at Synthplex visiting you la last year, the, I don't know, all the days. Yeah, are last really year. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow, that feels like a decade ago. But anyway. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and I, I ran into um, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Abbott, who is one of my absolute guitar idols. This guy is otherworldly when it comes to what he does. And he plays guitar on guitar. Like that's his thing. He's a tremendous, his, his, I think his moniker is guitar Jeff. 
if you look mm -hmm. him up. And he's one of just the sweetest, nicest people on earth. Um, and he plays uh, an old Roland AX and he's got a custom uh, casing around it and stuff. And I asked him one day, I said, you know, would you mind giving me a little bit of uh, tutelage? I'd, I'd love to know some of the guitar stuff that he does, especially the acoustic sampling stuff he does is tremendous. And I still mm -hmm. haven't really gotten to that yet. And so we sat on Skype and did a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, sessions together. And he said, why are, you, why are you using the Vortex? And he didn't ask it in a judgmental way, right. but he was curious. He's like, why aren't you using a Roland, right? And I was like, this is why. And I gave him my reason. He goes, oh, okay. And so I showed him what I, you know, what I planned. And he goes, yeah. He goes, okay, I could see that works for you. Mm -hmm. You found your... You found your freedom of movement with this particular instrument. You wouldn't have that with with a, with a Roland or maybe with a Korg or a Yamaha or whatever. Not right. because they're bad instruments, not because you don't know how to do it, but because for whatever reason, this fits my hand size, it fits my body type, it fits so much about my personality that this is just my choice, right? That's all it is. Um, and so it doesn't it doesn't make it wrong or right. It's just a personal preference, and mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of right we've talked about this where like there's a lot of um shows that talk about gear and they talk about gear in either a very clinical technical way where there's right. like no feeling or they talk about gear in this very feeling way but it's very judgmental um and there's really not a particular space where you can just ex not just experiment but experience all facets of gear um and and go through and run the gamut of like why is this one great why is this one not to my preference it doesn't make it bad but how would someone else use it right so this is i think this is something that we've been trying to create and it's it's a good thing man. couldn't agree with you more i'm playing an old pv you know um unbeknownst to most people pv made really really great guitars back in the 80s um and the 70s for that matter but this is this is a uh this was made in uh i believe uh, either the early 80s or uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and the thing that's great about this guitar in particular is that it's, you know, it's a solid maple body. So uh, look, I love tellies and this is a, a telly style. And uh, would I love to own one of those really expensive tellies? Sure, I would. But why? If I can get a great sound and I can play and I can identify and I can be a part of music with this, why would I want to just, you know, fork over a lot of extra money? Um, and, and I guess, you know, that, that's the thing. It's like just trying to find something different out there. Like I don't, uh, like that pink guitar I play, that's an old Yamaha, uh, SE250. Um, and the thing about the SEs that, uh, only, only my, only my, my, my family would probably know this, but my first guitar was an SE150 all the way back there. Cast your mind back to 1987. And, uh, it was a, it was a, uh, uh, a really, uh, basic, um, you know, before that was kind of like, oh, it's so basic. Uh, it was, uh, it was a very basic guitar with one knob and one pickup, but I learned the shit out of guitar on that one guitar and I, I stuck with it. I, I in fact, I have an SE 150 back here that is uh, custom painted and it's a piece of art and it's beautiful. I just haven't put it in any videos yet because, well, I haven't had time. Um, oh, but the thing is like, I don't, again, don't want to be like the typical guy. You know what it took to buy that Explorer back there for me to shell out the 900 bucks for that Explorer? Because Gibson, let me tell you, I, I have no problem saying this whatsoever. The Gibson's made a lot of misfires over the years. And uh, to be critical of them as a, as a company, uh, anything made it basically after a certain to. time. Huh? I'm like, remember who you're talking to though. I'm a Gibson girl. Well, I know that, but you know, we can have a difference of opinion. I have a seven, look, I have a 73 SE 150 sitting in the other room. Uh, it's a family heirloom. You'll have to pry that from my cold dead fingers to get that away from me. Um, but I wanted an Explorer and it took a lot of time to find one that I actually liked because I didn't like any of the ones that had come out in like the last 20 years. Yeah. So I went and I found a nine, I found an early nineties Explorer uh, from a guy down in orange that, that uh, set it up properly and it was beautiful. But that's the thing. It's just like knowing the company and just knowing what they're doing now. I suppose they're making some, you know, good adjustments. But uh, these days, it is a. Uh, I, I think they. I think maybe they don't always make the best guitars in the world. They do try to invent. They do try to show innovation, like the robot guitar, 
like the surround Les Paul was actually a really good guitar, but they should have had you working for them back then with the marketing. It probably would have been, well, if it was two, if it was 2020 and Miko working back in uh, 2007, I think is when that the guitar came out, it probably would have been a much bigger deal back then because it was a really cool guitar, but they didn't have your, your tutelage back then, uh, your talents. So um, they made a lot of misfires, even though they've tried, but you know, they, they have also done a few things with the guitar industry that have always just been head scratchers. And I'll say the same thing about Roland too and Boss. I, I love Roland and Boss. I have, I have, I have Roland synthesizers. Like I, my, my, first, my first pedal was a Boss pedal. But, you know, they uh, as a dealer, they are the biggest pain in the ass to work with. And that's why we don't work with them uh, at this particular time. I've got a lot of friends there because I worked at Cakewalk for several years. So I was always part of Cakewalk. The Boss family. Oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah, I went all over the I went all over the country doing clinics for Sonar and Project Five for the five people that bought Project Five. Um, oh so it, it, you know, that's what I mean about this being a very small industry and being like a very small town is that we do we do bump into each other. But I think it's good though to just I do have my loyalties on certain things, but I, I really what I value more than anything, and I'll just end it at this is um, as far as the brands that I choose to endorse and I choose to evangelize and do, because you might wonder why am I doing so many videos with NUX? It's not because I work for NUX because I don't work for NUX. They work for me because I, I do the, I do, I sell the products as a dealer, right. but I have a great partnership with them. And that is, that speaks in, in, in volumes. It's the same thing within music. I have a great partnership within music. When I do a video on the head rush, they push it for me. Um, and that helps perpetuate my business. Not only I get more views, but I get more sales and it helps. Yeah. And there's plenty of runoff, you know, the Sweetwater customers are going to go buy at Sweetwater. The guitar center customers are going to go buy a guitar center, but the ones that don't want to buy from them, they'll, they'll buy from me because they saw one of my videos. And it's because right. of that great partnership that I have with these brands. And if I don't have that partnership, then I, I will sell some of the stuff, but I couldn't I couldn't care less about it. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about being a bit more of a boutique dealer is that we can yeah. do that. I will say this about in music, though. What I love about them, and I, it doesn't matter which brand we're talking about, is there is one word that I can use to define them, which is innovation. And yes. they work really hard to innovate. I know like they, they're kind of looked upon as like the guys that just buy every brand under the sun that's not doing well and like bring them in and let's see what we can do with them. But they do that initially, and then what they do is they innovate and they make something that's really groundbreaking. Yeah. Uh, for example, the 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 the, the vortex there. Uh, that's wireless is is fantastic. Getting that wireless MIDI to work is amazing. What they've done for the Headrush line this line this year has been amazing. The Headrush has been. I saw the yeah. new uh, the new improved one at Nam, and it just blew me away. And the I firmware. Just, yeah, and I was yeah. I was like. So if I get the head rush and I have the board and I was like, I was going through this in my head. And can, <laughs> oh no, your eyes are fluttering. I can see what's going to happen here. Like, okay. Um, yeah, no, they are, they are, they are great. And in music, I mean, the other thing about in music is they're real people. They right? are real people. I, I've, people I've had some amazingly great relationship time with them on my, you know, not on this, just on this side of things, but you know, on, on the, the the old the old days um, when I was a buyer at, at that other company, um, and I'll even say it: some of the products you probably have in your studio, I had something to do with in one way, one way yeah. or another. Um, there's a certain red boxed audio interface out there um, that that name came from my office with my with my uh, assistant at the time. He and I coughed up that name over the phone on just a call with that other company. And that's what you use now. now. Well, a lot of people do at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you want to know where that name came from. Look no further. Look there no further. Is. I'm there not saying is. that I take all the credit at all. They did all the work and right. I worked for them for a while. And I'd rather walk barefoot on broken glass these days than go back to that kind of a life. I like working for myself. Um, and uh, I, I'm so very grateful for the fan base and the customer base that keeps coming back to buy stuff from us. Um, but, uh, I think, I think this has actually been a really good, uh, a really good session. I mean, I think we did some really cool stuff here because I think we had to, we had to do this even further and maybe do like once a month or once every other month, do like a, 
like a clinic of sorts and just do, yeah, you know, sit down and let's talk about one product and let's just evangelize the crap out of it. Actually, that's a good thing we can ask the viewers is um, whether you're watching this live now or whether you see it on the replay later, is that your Coke Zero? No, no, this is now my, I've now moved to my Waterloo uh, mineral water. Oh, I was like, is he drinking beer at 1.30 in the afternoon? If I was, I wouldn't be telling you. <laughs> I'm late to the party. Um, da, 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 Superman. So, yeah. no, but if for whether you're watching this live now or whether you're watching it later on the replay, um, you know, if, if you would like to see uh, Scott and me do something where it's just the two of us talking about stuff um, and you have particular topics that you'd like us to cover, please write in and let us know. You can always DM us at here you hear on the Facebook page or wherever, whatever native platform you're watching this from, you can always just type in in the comment section there as well. And remember to subscribe to the pedal guy is right there. Uh, subscribe to the gear you hear on Facebook. Hit that like button. Subscribe yes, to me. And because yes. <laughs> let's, let's not forget about you because we definitely need to, we definitely need to keep subscribing to Amiko and so she can keep us up to date with all the cool stuff she's doing. I, I have, I have now, I have to do, actually with one of our future guests, I have to hop on the phone now with um, a gentleman who is uh, an amp designer. Yes. I'm looking okay. forward to that one. That's going to be really cool. Yeah. Really fun one also because, oh, I can't say it publicly, but I'll tell you privately. He is now the steward of a very famous guitar that has resurfaced, which I will not mention. But let's Always. just leave it at that yes. for now. And thank everybody for um, for tuning in and for your questions and for your comments. And um, we do this every two weeks. So next week we're off, but then the week after we'll be back. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that one of our, our forthcoming guests is Steve Aguilar, who is a Hammond artist and a tremendous, when you see his pedal set up, your mind, your brain will leak out of your ears. He's just tremendous. Um, I saw the so, photo. Right. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. We've got a couple of other really great guests coming up. Um, but in the meantime, thank you all for watching. All right. And we'll see you next time. If I can, the awkward goodbyes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Ta-ta. Bye. -ta.